Hello and welcome to Sharp HR Career Corner with Karen Sharp Price. This podcast will inform and inspire you in your quest to find the right career path. If you're just starting out, looking to make a change in your field or transitioning into a new career, then this podcast is for you. We will be sharing tips and providing resources on topics such as writing resumes, interviewing, using LinkedIn, and networking. We will take a look at different careers, companies, and opportunities. You will hear success stories from professionals in all career paths, and so much more. You will leave this podcast with three key takeaways that you can easily put into practice. Enjoy! Welcome to Sharp HR Career Corner. I'm Karen Sharp Price. Today we're going to talk to James Bittner, who is a marketing coordinator and lives in Washington, D.C. Hi, James. How are you doing? Hi, how's it going? <laughs> Good. Good. Thank you for being on Sharp HR Career Corner. We appreciate your time. We yeah, want no problem. Happy we, to be. we want to talk to you about you know just where you started out in college, um, how you decided on marketing, and then the whole job search process that you went through. Um, there's a lot of people out there right now that are graduating because it's May. So there's a lot of colleges that are about to graduate, a whole bunch of people. Um, And then there's also the people that are out there because of the pandemic who still are looking. So I think that your your, um, advice and your suggestions and the things that you've gone through um, can actually help a lot of people to see what they're doing and maybe try to use some of the things that you're going to talk about today to maybe help them out a little bit. Um, So let's go back to Virginia Tech. You graduated in May of 2019. Uh, During your college years, how active were you in school, in the groups and clubs and things like that? Um, I was very active at Virginia Tech. I rarely slept, and when I did sleep, it was just just a few hours at a time. Um, I was in a lot of extracurriculars that weren't related to marketing as well as were related to. Okay. Um, a lot of what they look for in positions is those extracurriculars and you having the ability to, uh, to talk and to be able to communicate with people well, um, especially in positions where you're going to be curating, cultivating content for people. Um, so I was in you know, band organizations uh, uh, singing organizations, as well as uh, marketing organizations, specifically um, geared towards um, the marketing team at Virginia Tech. So VT Prism, I wasn't necessarily in, but I did have a lot of uh, affiliations with. Uh, my j- junior year, I hosted a competition uh, victory ceremony kind of so there was a competition called the barracuda bowl uh, in which i pitched to coca-cola an idea to host this large gaming event and uh their competition was based off of like how do we leverage gamers and coca-cola to students at virginia tech and they chose my plan for this event and i got to host it and i worked very closely with vt prison so there were a lot of different things i was doing while i was at virginia tech uh, some of them had to deal with business and marketing, and then a lot of them did not. But they're, uh, companies that are hiring are looking for both. What about leadership roles? Were you involved at that level in those, in those groups? In every group, I would say at some level I was involved in leadership. Uh, okay. In the band, I was a rank captain, which means I was in charge of certain members of the band. Um, in my acapella group, Naturally Sharp, I was the, uh, I was the senior rep manager. It basically meant that I was uh, in charge of leading the alumni to the senior level uh, people in certain events. Oh, okay. Um, and then the Barracuda Bowl, I was leading the the entire event. That was all planned by me. I was assisted by the marketing organization, but it was a plan developed solely by myself and then implemented with the help of faculty and Uh, the VT marketing team. Okay. So those leadership roles, I mean, were you at that time thinking that you needed that on your resume or were you just doing it because it just naturally came, those positions came to you? 
It was a little bit of both. Mainly it was because I wanted them because I, I like taking leadership roles. I like being more involved in the organizations that I take the time to be a part of myself. And it's also a way to give back. Um, but I did think in the back of my head that this is going to be good and look good on my resume. And eventually uh, I found out that it, it did pay off to be in those organizations and to have those leadership roles. Now, I think that also there's one piece of your background that also um, had a, had some positive um, impact and that was your Eagle Scout. So you became an Eagle Scout. Um, that is hugely leadership role and and I forget what the pro your main project was at the end for your Eagle Scout. What was yeah, that? My Eagle, Scout, my Eagle Scout project was uh, I built a mini observatory uh, outside of an astronomy park back home where I was from. Wow. Um, it took like an entire day to build the whole thing. Um, it, was, it was a lot of fun. It was very cold. But uh, yeah, the Eagle Scout position and all my years through Boy Scouts, through Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts has been, was most of my life. And that's basically like, oh, it's all leadership because every um, six months you rotate leadership positions and tr you know, try out something else, whether it be from leading a specific group of people to being in charge of a specific unit, whether that be uh, the quartermaster in charge of supplies or um, an SPO being in charge of the entire troop. So I would say that the Boy Scout organization really prepped me for the leadership roles that I had, even in high school and then all the way into college. So definitely, here's and it, a, we had to talk about that. Uh, yeah. As well. So That's here's a question, um, and I'm kind of skipping ahead a little bit, but did that come up in conversation during any interviews? Did they notice that, that Eagle Scout? It did. Uh, it came up in, I would say, not all of them, and I wouldn't even say half of them, but it did come up in the ones where I felt the best about those companies. Oh. Um, the people who were really asking the questions about my past and were really invested in me as a person rather than me as a worker uh, or employer, employee, uh, huh. those were the companies that were the ones asking those questions. That's interesting. Okay. So at what point did you know going into Virginia Tech that you wanted marketing? What, what were you thinking when you first started? I had no idea. Uh, when I got into Virginia Tech, I joined it because um, basically my college decision was based off of my two older brothers went to two schools and I went to those two schools and I was like, these are nice schools. I could, I could see myself going here. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, but I knew that the Pampa College of Business at Virginia Tech had a very general program in the start and you got to pick between eight courses and eight um, paths uh, while you were there. So between, you know, working BIT, econ, um, marketing, and uh, sales, and then a, a few other courses. Um, but I really had no idea what I wanted to do when I got to college. It just was taking those business courses and you get to kind of feel out which ones um, you would want to do more. And I just felt that marketing was the way to go. I started in hospitality and tourism management, actually. Okay. Um, and that just didn't really, didn't really do it for me. I wanted to be more involved with people, more involved with uh, creating content. And uh, my biggest pitch to uh, employers was I wanted to sell people things that they didn't know that they could have that would better their lives. Um, but I didn't want to do sales. So that was the hard part <laughs> of wanting to do marketing and not. <laughs> so was there a particular course that you took uh, in marketing that kind of clinched it? Or was it just a, a slow progression into marketing? It was marketing 101 really? <laughs> that did it for me, honestly. The first one, yeah. The first class that I had was um, with the marketing uh, dean or the marketing professor, like the main one on campus. And she was so energetic. And a lot of what she talked about, I was really invested in. And she actually was the one who got me in, like, she made it uh, a point to talk about the Barracuda Bowl in class. And so that was how I found out about that, uh, leading into what was probably the biggest part of my junior year was doing that whole competition. Um, so I would say that that one class affected me a lot. I mean, and I learned a lot more from a lot of the other classes I took, obviously, because I was just the one one But yeah. just like learning the basics and, and understanding what my future career path could be was exciting for me. So you have to kind of explain Barracuda Bowl for those that don't have any idea what it is. 
Yeah, um, that's a good point. So the Barracuda Bowl was a competition hosted by Coca-Cola at Virginia Tech. And it was their third year doing it. They brought it to the marketing department and they wanted uh, to pitch to the students, how do we leverage our product with gamers on Virginia Tech's campus? And I was a part of also a few of the gaming communities as well. So my idea was basically to have these communities come together uh, through the love of Coca-Cola and video games and have this giant event um, that would draw a lot of, you know, registration and attendees and um, just kind of a good marketing event that would showcase what Virginia Tech has to offer. And so you won the contest. And then what did you get to do with that? Um, They gave me $10,000 to host this event that I had to plan. I had to get um, all the systems. Uh, Renting game systems is not as easy as it sounds. There's not a lot of people who do it. Uh, as well as finding the venue and the food and the prizes. So I was in charge of all of that, as well as, and most importantly, the marketing for the event, how it was going to be, uh, you know, showcased to the students. Was it through flyers and posters? Was it through email invites? Was it through teachers? And the answer was all of the above. We used most of um, what we had on hand, as well as the student Twitter account that we were posting on constantly. So who was your team of people that helped you through that? Because you were alone when you presented the your idea, mm-hmm. but then it sounds like you had you had to have a team of people to help you put this off. Mainly it was me working with the um, faculty, but with the social media and the, um, the online invites with emails, that was um, VT Prism, the marketing community. They worked through all the content and then would send to me to approve. And then mm-hmm. I would uh, give it the, the old check mark. Wow. And that was a lot of experience. I enough, I'd say. Over- that, I mean, that was a lot. It was, and that was before I had finished marketing. <laughs> <laughs> wow, really? I didn't know that. I, <laughs> wow, okay. Yeah. That's crazy. So, So is there anything, like looking back now, is there anything that you wish – that you had done in college to help you more in marketing? Or do you think that you, you know, you were involved in so many things and you sort of diversified and, you know, do you think that you covered all your bases or or would you recommend something for a college student right now to be doing? Um, It's tough because it would have been easier for me to definitely join VT Prism early on in college, join marketing earlier on. So like coming into college and marketing, I would have had a better idea of what I wanted to do in the future, as well as being more involved in that organization. Like I said, I was never actually in the organization. I was offered a place in it, but with all the other things I had going on, I just, I couldn't accept it knowing that I had the, uh, it was, a, it was another time commitment that I just didn't have the time for with everything else I had going on. Yeah. Um, so maybe dropping one of my extracurriculars for that would have helped me get a job sooner. But all in all, I don't regret not taking that position because I think that what I learned from those other organizations is just as helpful in terms of what you do later in life and what you do in your job just out of college. Um, So I guess my advice would be to kind of do what your gut tells you to do. Because my gut told me that while being a part of this marketing organization would help my marketing skills, being a part of the other organizations like band that I was a part of would help with leadership skills and would help with um, uh, all in all confidence skills too. Just being able to, because I, I know music well and I know marching well. So being a part of the marching band and having that confidence booster of like, I know what I'm doing here. I think definitely helped me later in life and definitely at the Barracuda Bowl competition when I was pitching. I don't think I would have had that confidence to go up there on stage without being in those organizations that I had a lot of fun with through, for so many years and getting those leadership and confidence um, skills. And you really enjoyed all those other things. Like it wasn't just things that you, you know, belong to. You thoroughly you know, dived in and (laughs) dove in and really enjoyed being a part of the band and 
your group, your singing group and, and all of that. So um, I, I think that that is really important that you don't just put things on your resume. They have to be things that you actually have an interest and a passion for. Um, because I'm sure that they probably, some of those companies asked you those questions about the things that you were doing and, and maybe even answering some of your questions, the um, behavioral questions in interviews, you were able to pull your experiences from all of those things, not just your marketing uh, background. So, so I think I, I have to agree with that. So we're going to take a, a little break and we're going to play a game. It's called Get to the Point. Um, and I'm going to ask you 10 questions and you just respond with whatever pops into your head. <laughs> Are you ready for this? Okay. Okay. It's fun. I, I yeah, promise. let's do it. I promise. Okay. So virtual or in person? In person, for sure. <laughs> okay. Getting tired of the, of the virtual, <laughs> the virtual world. Okay. Now this one might be tricky. Mm -hmm. Pizza? Or buffalo wings? Buffalo wings. That's easy. <laughs> All right, you're allowed back into buffalo. <laughs> um, social media of choice. I think it would depend on where I'm, why I'm going to social media, because for business reasons, I would obviously say LinkedIn. But for personal reasons, I would say Twitter. Okay. Um, favorite video game? Ooh, that is a tough one. <laughs> um, I would say Legend of Zelda. That's a classic. Okay. Um, what movie streaming platform do you use? Do you Netflix. Use... Oh, Netflix. Okay. Um, books or music? music favorite place that you've traveled uh ireland okay choice of beverage loganberry juice really i don't think i knew that of you um <laughs> phone call or email phone call hmm. and drum roll Favorite fast food? Ooh. A close second would be Mighty Taco, but the top has to be Chick-fil-A for me. I <laughs> See, now you hesitated so long on that one, and I was shocked because <laughs> I thought that would have rolled right out of you. <laughs> I know, but... Oh, was I it just, the buffalo pressure? All of that food, it's tough. <laughs> Just for what I have right now. <laughs> okay. All right. That's it. Thank you so much for playing. <laughs> that that, that <laughs> was fun. I learned some things about you I didn't know. Logan Berry. Um, okay. So we're gonna we're gonna hop back on to to our questions. Um, so so you graduate in May of 2019 with a Bachelor of Science in Marketing. Um, can you tell us like the experience for you after graduation? with the whole job search. What what did you face? What what were you looking at? What was the world like, you know, pre-COVID um, in May of 19 or 2019? Yeah, um, when I graduated college, I didn't have a job lined up. Um, I talked to a lot of my professors before I graduated and they made sure to tell me that it's okay that you don't have a job right out of college. That's not a requirement, it's not like you're gonna be held back in life because of it. Um, you wanna find the job that's right for you. Um, and if you take a job that's not right for you, you know that and you can get out quickly. Um, but get right out of the gate in May, 2019, I started looking. Um, I probably had like a lack lackadaisical summer because it was like my last true summer. Um, but probably around mid July, I started really looking. Um, you know, looking at all the social media platforms I could, whether that be um, LinkedIn, Indeed, um, for gaming specifically, which is what I wanted to go into was uh, video game marketing. Um, Hitmarker was a good uh, source of like esports jobs. And uh, I applied to over 150 jobs altogether in between 2019 and 2020. 
Um, and I had interview after interview, um, a lot of them in person at first towards um, the September, October timeframe mm -hmm. of 2019. And uh, a lot of them were not super great. A lot of companies just wanting people to come in and do the, the bottom tier work, um, especially companies that say that they're marketing companies, but are companies and want you to start cold calling, which is not what I wanted to do. I wanted to find a job that was, as I said before, more in the content creation aspect of marketing. So coming out of college was definitely tough, looking very niche for a video game marketing position. Um, eventually, come December of 2019, I found uh, a few uh, it was around the November, December timeframe. I found a few um, working for the Wizards and the uh, Capitals for their esports teams, um, kind of manning the video game walls that they had at the, um, the stadium. That was a lot of them, uh, as well as working for this company called Super League, uh, which hosts video game events in and around DC in the DC area. Um, but those were part time jobs and not full time jobs. Um, I was hopeful that the Wizards would lead to a full-time job, and uh, towards the beginning of the pandemic, it was looking like it might, um, but then as the pandemic hit, that job opportunity got taken away, uh, budgets got cut, and I was not, unfortunately not able to uh, proceed with that dream anymore. Um, and in late December, early January, because I had those two part-time jobs, I was living in Arlington, um, it's not super cheap to live up here. So I had to get another third part-time job working at GameStop. Um, and I will tell you that working in customer service, no matter where it is, I'm sure at least, especially at GameStop, it's very humbling. It's a humbling experience. <laughs> and all throughout the time when I was working for these part-time jobs, I was still looking for positions. Um, but with, you know, people graduating from, um, my year looking for jobs, which is hard enough itself. Now I was competing against those graduating in the fall uh, and winter mm -hmm. uh, semester, as well as then next came the spring semesters. Um, and what kind of like the interviews that you were going through, I remember you um, telling me some that I, I guess it was after the pandemic started that, that they started doing more virtual interviews, but that you would you would get a uh, an appointment for an interview and you'd get online and there would be other candidates um, at the same interview at the same time being interviewed. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience? I, I've actually been in interviews in person where there's been multiple people interviewed at the same really? time. Really? Um, as well. It's uh, and th those are the companies that you probably want to stay away from. I mean. <laughs> That's just a personal point of view. They're, they might be good companies, but there's no personal interaction between you and the employer then. It's going down the line. What do you? What did you do? How many years did you do it? Okay, cool. Uh, what did you do? Oh, okay, I see you like that. And they're kind of like, it, it felt like they weren't truly wanting to evaluate us as people and just as their employees. Wow. Um, so that, that was... Th those were never good interviews. They were never asking the questions of like, oh, I see you did this in college. Uh, what was that like? Or tell me about a specific time when you use your leadership roles or um, when in a leadership role where you had to, um, you know, tell someone no or specific questions like that. It was very general, very basic questions. Um, and sometimes I, I was interviewed with people who weren't even going for the same job. They were just getting them all done at the same time for different positions. Wow. Um, yeah. Were there so, other kinds of interviews that you had that also, you know, while you were in it, you saw and you felt a lot of like red flags, like, no, this is not going to be a good situation. What, what types of other experiences did you have that you just, your gut told you, you didn't think this was going to be a good match? I would say that the biggest red flags that I come across would be, um, if the, the questions the employer asks you, which I went over a little bit, just if, if they're not interested in you as in your experiences, they're just interested in filling a seat, um, you wanna stay away from that. 
um, it, it's the questions they ask. It's the, the, the body language that you can read through a zoom interview as well. Um, you can definitely, if, if they are doing a zoom interview, if you're interviewing virtually and you can't see their face, that's probably also a red flag. If it's just a, a phone call. Oh um, yeah. Just in terms of uh, like a final interview, I, I would say like mid entry level interviews and mid level interviews, I would say phone calls are fine, but final interviews should be face to face, whether you're virtual or not, which was actually my other point. Um, if there's not multiple stages to an interview process, if it's a one and done interview process, that's usually not good either, which means they don't, they don't see the, the need to filter out as much um, in terms of potential candidates. If they give you an answer on the first interview, that makes them seem desperate, at least to me, mm -hmm. that they want to get someone filling their job as quickly as possible because they probably have a high turnover rate. Right. So looking out for that as well. Okay. And so, you know, the pandemic, you were talking about um, January ish and then the pandemic hits March, middle of March. So how did that throw you a curveball um, in your job search? What did you, what did you learn during that time? Yeah. Um, so when, when the pandemic hit, I lost all three of my jobs because they were all in-person jobs. You can't do, you can't work retail, you can't work at stadiums and you can't work events. So um, all of them had to be suspended for, for whatever reasons um, indefinitely. And they would still be so today if I was still working those jobs. Um, and it was really tough. I couldn't find any other work. I didn't want to work at a place or in person because there was a pandemic going on. I wanted to find a virtual job, but virtual jobs that are good, decent paying are not easy to find right off the bat, especially when everybody who is now graduating at the same time that the, around the pandemic hit is also looking for those jobs. Right. Um, but getting a job is basically just a game of chance but your chances increase exponentially if you're constantly looking for jobs. Um, so when I got laid off, um, I had to go on uh, unemployment for a little bit, which was probably my least proudest moment. <laughs> uh, but I had to do it. I, there, was no, there was nowhere else for me to turn and I wasn't gonna um, give up in DC and crawl back home. I wanted to try to make my way through it. And I'm glad I stuck with it because eventually it did work out. So how, how did you keep yourself mentally positive during all of that? Because that, that like just blew up in your face and you had no control. No one saw it coming, the pandemic. Um, you lost all three of your jobs. You had not gotten your foot in the door yet in your career. Um, you know that there's the class that graduated with you. There's another class the next semester after that um and everything the world hit a standstill how, how do you positively keep um upbeat ab about that when things seem to just like kind of dry up in front of you it was it was tough um i mean there are good days and there are bad days for that especially when um you, you're refreshing linkedin and face and um um indeed just about every other day uh, or every day, twice a day, three times a day, um, trying to find and hope that someone's posting a job what, of what you're specifically looking for. And obviously when the pandemic hit, I had to give up on my niche field of esports marketing. I was just looking for a marketing job that I could do. Um, trying to stay away from sales because there were sales positions opening up, but I knew that if I started down the path of sales, then it might affect my future career. And I wanted to stick with that as long as I could. Okay. Um, I got just about to the end of my rope on that as well before I landed uh, the current job that I have now. Um, I was probably about two or three months away from either having to move back home or suck it up and get like a cold calling sales job. Um, but definitely during the pandemic, when I was looking for a job with no job, the best ways to cope with that would be I had, luckily I had my roommates who were there supporting me as well as um, you, you just can't dwell on everything. 
you can't let it hit to control your life because it is a big part if not the biggest part of your life is your career but you have to you have to find you know some ways to have fun and enjoy yourself too mm -hmm. which is kind of what i learned from my experiences in college my extracurricular so you know i would look in the morning and then play music in the afternoon try and stay productive at least in some way um i'd virtually hang out with my friends a lot too, to try and get my mind off of it and look again at night and hope that something can come up. And I had an interview just about every week or every other week. Um, and those were a lot of the one person interviews or if there were multiple stages, it wasn't like they were truly gunning for me. And then some of them just didn't work out. Some of them maybe I could have taken, but um, they were asking me to move and I didn't have the means to do that or it was too far away, et cetera. Okay. So looking back um, through the job search, what do you think were the things that you were doing that really were, that were working? I mean, it might be a slow process of working, but, but it was moving you in the right direction. What, can you think of any of those things that you were doing? Um, it's, staying on the grind of finding the types of jobs you want and then looking for them in a different way. So um, looking, so pinpointing the types of jobs and titles that you would want, maybe from researching on LinkedIn, certain specific titles that you think you would like to do and see what the, those specific people post about and maybe if that's what you wanna be doing and or just like continuing to change up your searches for your Indeed and uh, uh, LinkedIn and uh, glass or whatever you're wherever you're looking because if you keep looking at the same ones you're going to get stagnant after a while so you need to be constantly changing that up changing up your wording um always going back to what you initially think is your your best um search histories but um trying to get those keywords that maybe the employer added in um as a as an add-on at the end Okay. So, so now, you know, we have good news. You, you found, um, your position. Um, can you tell us, you know, what you're doing, who, who you're working for and what it's like? What, what did it feel like when you finally got to say yes and, uh, start working in your career? Yeah. So about a year and a half after I graduated from college, um, it was, my, my start date for this job was October 12th and I graduated in May of 2019. Um, I had the interview probably around my first interview in late July, second interview, probably in September because they were overturning a lot of people. Wow. Um, but not turnover, like not a lot of people leave, but just getting a lot of people in. Yeah. Uh, I currently work for Kerasoft Technology Corporation uh, in Reston, Virginia, but it's all virtual right now. So you've been there seven, it's almost seven months, right? Yeah. Actually, yeah, today. Seven, seven, yep, yeah, seven months today <laughs> is my, my career anniversary. Yeah. Um, and I couldn't be happier. Uh, everybody who I work with is amazing. My team is amazing. Uh, it's been a dream considering that I was considering moving home. And I'm doing now work that I think is important. Uh, I am the our marketing coordinator for uh, the Adobe eLearning and PPBU um, uh, organizations at Kerasoft. So basically, uh, the Adobe Connect platform, which is basically like Zoom, but for Adobe, and uh, Adobe Captivate Prime, which is a learning management system or LMS. I manage all of the webinars and events that take place around those two products. Uh, if we were out of a pandemic, I would be hosting live events as well. But since we're doing uh, and since we're in the pandemic, I'm only doing webinars as of now. That would, that would, sounds very cool. And and what about some of these perks that I keep hearing about? Uh, the the company really takes care of me. Uh -huh. um, like I, I got that vibe from day one, but um, he'll send out cards and uh, gifts for certain holidays to all of the employees. Um, for, for Just for instance, this past week, uh, for Mother's Day weekend, he let everybody off two hours early to go home and, and say hi to our moms, which Aww. was nice, because I wasn't. Um, so the, the company really cares about me, and I'm glad that I waited as long as I did to find that company. And and I hear that the sometimes the happy hours um, virtually are kind of fun, too. <laughs> the happy hours are fun. Um, I have only been to, there's, we only have had a few of them, but 
it's nice to get to know people um, outside of just what I see on a screen. It's because it's people hanging out and talking about different topics that I have not experienced because I've never worked in a true office before. Right. So it'll be interesting going back to the office once the pandemic's over. I don't really know how to handle myself. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all going to have to learn how to re enter into the real world of of in-person get-togethers i think i think everybody's in the same boat on that one so um so at the end of the podcast i always ask my guests to give three pieces of advice um what what advice would you share with college seniors right now that are, are about to graduate or have already graduated maybe in the beginning of may um looking to get their first career position what what advice would you give um, number one would definitely be don't give up because I know that it sucks a lot of the time, but it can get better. Like it's, it's only a short time in your life that you're going to be looking for your first job because after you get your first job, you've had a job and you'll have experience and it'll have to be easier from that point on. Definitely don't give up on your dreams <laughs> as cliche as that sounds because uh -huh. it's, it's possible. Um, it, it's tough in the world that we live in now, but it's not impossible. Um, that would be my advice. Okay. And, and I think that that's really true. Um, and I really like the fact that you say that it's just a short time that you're looking now, you know, you would say, well, that was a year and a half. And, and I remember, you know, at some t moments it was very difficult, but the idea of waiting for the right one to come along. If you had taken some of the other positions, you may have, you know, turned around and left really quickly. Um, and your gut tells you that this is the place. They treat you really well. You're learning a ton of stuff. You love the people you're working with and you haven't even gotten to work yet in person. So like that's gonna add a whole nother dimension. I think I also say to a lot of students, don't jump at the first offer right outside of college because you have to really know your gut has to tell you now did your gut tell you that that this was the one how did you know that this was going to be the right fit it was a mixture of things um my gut was definitely one of them but i just I, it was a feeling that it would be a job but more so like people stay with this company. It's more of a career for a lot of people. Um, so I would say that it's, it, it is up to kind of what you feel in that moment. So you're good. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time tonight. I, I really appreciate that, uh, that you took some time out to talk to us. There's a lot of people right now that are just about to start that whole process that you had over, you oh. know, it, May 2019 and and it's a little scary because the pandemic is still not completely over so um, they're still going to face some of those issues that you faced and um, and you know what I've talked to some of the to the college um, students and one of the first things I think that I hear about the most is they're just a little fearful and it doesn't it's not even about the pandemic it's just they're not going to be in school anymore like all of a sudden they have a life that they're in control over. And to them, that's a little bit scary because all of a sudden they're going to be the adult and, and, and their yeah. future is in their hands. Did you feel that a little bit? Like you didn't have the security of school anymore. You, you were out on your own. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, it, it was a culture shock to jump to uh, Arlington, Virginia when I didn't, know really anybody here other than my brother and his roommate um and i, I really don't help, haven't really been out that much either because i moved here didn't really have like a constant money flow so i couldn't like go out and do things and then the pandemic hit so i really haven't been anywhere and i have <laughs> friends who are graduating coming to live here like oh you should show me around i was like we'll be looking together i don't know what that's doing. <laughs> well i i think that you know everybody has to start at that spot and, and it's an unfamiliar, a um, little bit scary feeling, but you are the prime example that it all, it all works out. It all is meant to be, and you can be in a very, very good place 
Um, you just have to have patience. And another reassuring note is that a lot of companies are switching to virtual and have switched to virtual. So in terms of looking for a position that you think would you would want, I'm sure that there's something out there that has switched and will be accommodating. Like Kerasoft. Kerasoft was only 100% online for maybe 5% of the company. And now it's 100% online. Wow. So, um, and I'm sure that once the pandemic ends, it'll probably do some sort of hybrid and then everybody will be back in. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, the um, future is unknown for a lot of companies, but I am seeing a lot of opportunities that are opening up now. So that's all a good thing for those that are about to graduate. And um, so thank you again. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you everyone for listening to Sharp HR Career Corner. If you're graduating from college or graduate school and you're having a problem finding opportunities, then please contact Sharp Human Resources. We'd love to help you out. We have a program just for you. Go to sharphumanresources-buffalo.com for more information. If you enjoy listening to our podcast, I encourage you to download the podcast, leave a comment, and share with others you know. The more downloads and comments and likes our podcast receives, the better our ratings and the easier we can be found. So thank you in advance. Until next time, be kind, everyone. We need to show a lot more kindness in the world, and it starts with you and I. Thanks again for listening, and have a great day.